is the Last Minute Blues Podcast with Jeff Burton, Donnie Fandango, and former Blues defenseman Jamie Rivers. Powered by Together Credit Union, empowering you to achieve your financial goals. It is the Last Minute Blues Podcast. Donnie Fandango, Jeff Burton, and the dude, Jamie Rivers. Jamie, I want to say this to you, and this is going to be a no surprise for, for numerous reasons. But uh, I had the chance, I had the opportunity very quickly to see you and your lovely lady on Sunday night at Pearl Jam. Your girl is so sweet. I definitely like her more than you. <laughs> Dude, like, like 100%. And, just, and what's so Most awesome. Most people about, do, Donnie. And what's so awesome, people, is that JB will start to try to ramp up to give me trouble. And she'll just be like, no, 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 ignore him. Go back, go back to your seat. Just have a good night. It was so great to see you, man. Yeah. I've seen you out a couple times socially lately. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Getting out and doing some things. It's fun. I love doing it. And, uh, you know, my new girlfriend, um, she loves going to the concerts and events and getting out and doing things. I hadn't been, like, in years. And we started going, you know, at the end of last summer. A couple things. Chris Stapleton, I think, was our first show. And then, you know, obviously with the, the perks of being at a radio station, you get a chance to go to a few more things. And, uh it's great. It's a lot of fun. And we were, you know, we were kind of sitting around in the middle of the afternoon and uh, I threw out an eagle call. Literally, I wrote eagle call <laughs> to uh, somebody of the higher ups here at the radio station yeah. saying, uh, I know this is last minute and I am an absolute ass hat. However, if you had two tickets to Pearl Jam, it wouldn't suck. <laughs> and I didn't think, I thought I was going to get a go chase yourself moment. Right. And uh, then it was thrown out to me that, yes. They were available, but I had to pregame with said person. Uh huh. So you went to DBs and hung out so, with the boss. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yep, that's what we did. Went to DBs, which, uh, which, by the way, what an awesome spot. I had a great time. The people there were fantastic. Can the we, food? How about the food? Can we talk about that for a listen, second? Listen, that's what I was going to say. I freaking love the freaking What's food there food? so much. I only had one thing while I was there, but I overate it. Well, well, there's two things, man. I can go with the wings anytime, anytime, incredible. any day, and there's d- definitely different flavors, but they have onion rings there that I would kill somebody for. Wow, Donnie. Dude, they are just so, you should say like, that. They're so Let it though. light and like fluffy and not, and not um, uh, greasy. Oh, God, they're just so good. So they're tacos. Oh, yeah. I don't know what they call it, the Jack Stack or something like that. Yeah. They got some catchy name to it. Those, like, deep-fried tacos. Okay, four come in an order in a little paper boat. Mm-hmm. Or 12. Yeah. Now, I didn't eat all 12. I ate eight. <laughs> so, uh, again, my girlfriend and I were sitting there, and we're like, we, we needed just something to eat. Because we were pre-gaming how, now, and the, uh, the beverages were flowing yeah. because said individual... Was well on his way. So, mm-hmm. you know what? Guess what? We got to play catch up. <laughs> and um, so we like got to eat something just a little. And somebody said, Oh, you got to try the tacos. I'm like, Tacos he, at DB's? And right. Like, no offense to this place, but I'm like, I don't know if it seems like an authentic Mexican. My God, were they good. Man. So when I first started doing a couple of gigs there, filling in for Tony when Tony was gone for football Sundays. Um, you know, Mary would give me trouble walking out the door because, uh, you know, the ladies can be scantily clad there a little bit. No, oh, it's just very warm. Uh, and uh, Donnie. Maybe, maybe that's mm-hmm. it. But I would always tell her, honey, it's the food. I love the food. I don't remember what show it was, but we were out, we were downtown and she was like, well, let's go to DB's if the food's so good. And I took her there and she loved it. And so oh, yeah. we've been back multiple times since, man. It, it is a really tremendous spot to like eat, to watch a game, to just hang out. It was great. And Ashley was like, yeah, we're, we're definitely coming back. She's like, we're going to pack up uh, randomly on a Sunday because the football games were all on. And she's like, we're just going to drive down to DB's and we're going to hunker in, watch some football, eat some tacos and have some fun. Now I was the, like, the, okay, sold. The only thing I could say, though, is that the last time that I was there for football was last year when the Bills played the Colts. And the Colts absolutely ran all over the Bills. Yeah. So I might, I might wait to go back for a minute. No, Don, the way your Bills are playing, I'd be there every Sunday. I am you. very nervous about Sunday, dude. We it's have a big got, game. Well, not only that, but we have got both of our corners are out. Both of our safeties are out. Is Josh Allen out? He is not. Is Diggs out? Uh, no, he is okay, not. You're fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you're you for fine. making me feel Watching a those bit guys better. in the last game, I'm like, you're fine. <laughs> so, no, wait, hang on. Before we keep, because we're we're coming to a crescendo. Yeah, here, yeah, yeah. We're that, ramping it up towards the hockey. Yeah. Towards the hockey. We'll get there eventually, I think. 
Uh, Probably. But that night, we were at DB's, and that we saw each other was Pearl Jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had seen you in the hallway. Oh, yeah. Okay? And I am a big Pearl Jam fan. Mm -hmm. I have had the honor and the pleasure of spending time with Eddie Vedder on a personal note, like eating dinner with him in Chicago, uh, and then watching him play an acoustic set just out of the blue, walking into a bar and saying, hey, can I have a guitar and play? And people went nuts. Mm Mm-hmm. Very... I love the man, love his music, love Pearl Jam. I don't know if I was blown away with their performance here. Okay. And the reason I say that is there were some songs that I really love Mm -hmm. that never got played. Sure. And I know they changed their set Mm -hmm. every from show to show to show. Yeah. But I thought they would just jumble up the songs as far as like when they play them, not necessarily not playing some of their biggest hits. Yeah. And so I was kind of like, and the way they started, I wanted to get punched in the face Got to it. start the show. And there was a ramp up, yeah. And then you could take it down, then punch me in the face, then take it down, and then finish off with a punch right in the nose. Yeah. It didn't happen that way. No. It was really different. I liked it, and I was singing along, and I was there, man. Yeah. But I thought to myself halfway through, I'm like, ah, they haven't played Jeremy. Yeah. They haven't played Rearview Mirror. Mm-hmm. I love the song Daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I love Last Kiss. Mm-hmm. I know that's kind of a cheesy song, but it, it brings back memories from when I was a kid. My dad used to play the original one. That's that, really awesome. And so I was like waiting for that to play. So I have some thoughts on this. I oh. gave it a three out of five, Donnie. Uh, yeah, I you, know. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Listen, man. Here's the thing, okay? I, inherently, I think you and I view going to see a band a little bit different, and that's okay. All right. When I crap sandwich, no, dude, not at all. When I go see the band, I want to go along for the ride that they want to take me on. Okay, I want them to do what they want to do. All right. Yeah, I want it on demand. I and I understand (laughs) that I am in the minority there. So, like when Pearl Jam, and I'm not lying, when Pearl Jam played Even Flow, I went to the bathroom. What? When Pearl Jam plays Black, I go to the bathroom. These songs to me, I have heard so much. Not only have I heard them, but I've played them so much that I do not enjoy them literally at all anymore. So it's when I hear some more of the different album track stuff from Pearl Jam, I that's what I want to hear. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They don't play Last Kiss Live very much. They they really only do that every so often. I remember Eddie so playing often. that acoustically that one night in Chicago. That's sure. He grabbed the guitar. He played it acoustically, and it floored me how good it was. And the thing, too, is, man, is like they have, at this point, I think 10 albums, so many songs. You can't just always be going to the web. I, I just, as a huge Pearl Jam fan, I, I just don't have to have Daughter or Jeremy or any of those for it to for me to be happy. Well, there. you're not invited to my Pearl Jam. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it, man. I, but also, too, you have to realize this about me too, because like when I knew that Yellow Ledbetter was going to be the last oh. song or one of the last songs, that's when I started going to the car to beat traffic. <laughs> okay, Tony, I am seriously in shock. I thought you were messing with me at first. No, man. Who the hell goes to the car when Yellow Ledbetter's playing? Me. Because I. Who goes to the bathroom when Black is playing? Me. Who goes to the bathroom when Even Flow is playing? Me. Something wrong. <laughs> no, man. They're... All this time, I thought you were normal. Oh, dude. Well, kind of. Listen, if you had been playing Even Flow almost once a day, every day, I think for I the did. last 20 years, well, okay, yeah, I am yeah. not sure that it would hold up to the same meaning yeah, and but feeling. It's live, Donnie. Yeah, it... And by the way, another thing. Don't you feel like they could have turned it up two levels on the volume in there? Um, like... When they were playing their songs, I could turn fully. And Mike Ryder and Bond were a couple of people that live was there too. Yeah, with yeah. Us. I could turn and have. I was talking like this to them in the middle of the show, and they could hear me. Huh? That part I didn't really notice. I did because usually you, you can feel the. Yeah, yeah. Like you kind of feel that when you're in the crowd. That's like that's what gets the adrenaline going. Is like you're actually not just hearing the music; you're like feeling it through you. It was like, eh. I don't know, man. I think they might know their audience and know that. Well, if they know their audience, then they would turn it up because we're all older and, and deaf can't now. hear. What? From, 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 <laughs> but yeah, man, I mean, it's... Whatever. But it's, I, but it's lo- I like the show. I sound like a crusty old No, you don't. Right now. No, no, you don't. But see, that's You're the thing. you me feel guilty. Well, I didn't mean to do that even at all because I think that there's just, just different ways me. to look at it. He won't take my calls anymore. <laughs> but like, I literally... I mean, like, I honestly... I love that band so much. I mean, like, high school, as you can imagine... 
was a little rough for young Donnie. And it was clinging to bands like that really helped me through. So yeah. that first record especially is so very Big near and, and dear to my heart. I'll never forget it. Either. I was playing junior hockey. And like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, that whole wave, Soundgarden, all that stuff came in. And I mean, it was on like repeat in the locker room. We had the old five disc changer. Yeah, man. It was like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden. Uh, well, Danzig was in there at the time. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like shuffle, and we just go. Dude, I have the best. So, so I, I, I don't know where I ended up oh, getting. Oh, Stone Temple Pilots. Oh, that was yep, the next core. one. Yeah. So one night, I'm in my room. I have my headphones on. I'm listening to Pearl Jam 10. And I'm and I have you know like the Sony Walkman with the regular like Sony little Sony headphones. And my dad comes in my room, and he wants to know what I'm listening to. So he puts them on, and he was like, "Son, how can you hear anything with these?" And I was like, "I don't know. That's just what they came with. I mean, I work at Schnooks as a bagger. I mean, it's what I can do, Pop." And the next day, my dad came home came home with these awesome headphones, like real deal headphones, so that I could hear the music. <laughs> and man, that was a game Changed changer, man. Man, that was a game changer. I didn't know how crappy those little headphones were. That's and awesome. so I will I'll never go back. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was just, you know, man, but I think one of the things that I want to talk about, because I I think we all kind of perceive those situations a little bit differently. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think okay. that does I think that's all right. It's fine. You know? I grew up with this crazy irrational fear of going to the dentist and it led to me having a ton of issues with my teeth. However, my kids, it's the exact opposite. Since we started going to Crestwood Dental Group and seeing Dr. Maxwell, my kids aren't tripped out by going to the dentist like at all. Dr. Maxwell and his staff make it so easy for all of us. And here's why. One, it is some of the best customer service that you are going to find. They treat you tremendously as a patient of Crestwood Dental Group. Also, Dr. Maxwell is always finding the latest and the greatest in new technologies for your dental work. Again, to just try to make it easy on you, easy on the kiddos. Listen, Dr. Maxwell is going to take the same care of you that he does for me and my family. I know it. If you're looking for a dentist for the family or maybe you're not happy with what you got, reach out to Dr. Maxwell and his staff. Crestwood Dental or give him a call at 314-463-5655. That's 314-463-5655. Dr. James Maxwell, Crestwood Dental Group, one of the proud sponsors of the Last Minute Blues podcast. All right, so maybe some blues hockey talk? Yeah, how are we talking about hockey? Since we were at Enterprise Center for the show. Yeah, yeah. And I was looking around. It's weird because when they configure it for the rock show, they're trying to figure out, well, where the hell am I in the arena? Where do the benches usually go? Right. And so, yeah, so Blues Hockey is here, Donnie. Yeah, and so I'm going to say this, and I, it's going to come out wrong. Of course you are. But, but I'm going to say it anyway. If Uh-oh. if things would have happened in a different order with Marco Scandella, we could have kept David Perron. Well, yeah, but that, if my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. Okay, <laughs> Donnie? Like, come on. I guess, I guess you're right. Like, come on. <laughs> I, you're right, man. I just, I, I just saw, you know what it got me? I saw the picture of Perron. In the sweater yesterday with the wings helmet yeah. on, and I was like, "He looks good, I'm don't he? St- he really does, I man. It. I hate it so much. He looks really good, that's, and I hated it. That, that's all that is. But I think you know the the one good thing about this, you know, over the course of the last couple of years, we have been big fans of Mikola, you know, and and, and you know we have seen hints of goodness from Scott Perunovich. So it really He's got d- a long way to go, Donnie. Bo- He's got a long way to go. Perunovic does. Yeah, he does. Talk and to me. So let's go back to your first comment about Scandella, because some people were uh, confused with that, too. On the fast lane, they were texting in, like, oh, we, why would... One, Scandella wasn't hurt when free agency hit. Right. So how can you even predict that? You can't. You cannot. So that's why, you know, unfortunately, you couldn't keep David Perron. Had it happened uh, before that, probably could have had a chance, although I don't think LTIR would have even kicked in because it's Free agency type. That's right. It would have. I don't know the rules. I'm not going to pretend to be the guy that does. Um, it didn't work out. It is what it is. Yeah. Now moving forward, Nico Mikola showed us a lot last year. I liked the way he played. I thought he was overwhelmed towards the second half of the season, playing in a top four role. That's okay. Mm-hmm. He's a young defenseman. He had never been in that situation before, and he was being put out there in matchups that were overwhelming. I've been there. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Night in and night out to play against McDavid, McKinnon, you name it, Blake Wheeler, Shifley, like all the Kachucks, the Goudreaux, all the best players in your conference. You can do it sporadically. Mm -hmm. You can elevate your game. 
But night in and night out, those are hard minutes, man. So the guys that play that shutdown role, people don't know how hard and taxing it really is, both from a physical standpoint and a mental standpoint. You have to think the game twice as fast to defend somebody who's thinking the game at a turbo level. Think about that for a second. Nathan McKinnon. Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl. Yeah, These yeah. guys operate at warp speed with their hockey IQ. It's incredible. You have to be twice as fast to be ahead of them in order to defend that. Yeah. So that's a lot on a young guy. And I felt that he really came into his own being put back in the third pair alongside Robert Bortuzzo. Mm-hmm. I think that they're both big guys. They both play with some sandpaper. They block shots. They're really good penalty killers. I thought it was great. So when I say Scott Perunovic has a long way to go, he does. Mm-hmm. Think about last year. Came in, played pretty well. Then he kind of had some ice time taken away. Not taken away, just his ice time diminished slightly because you couldn't uh, trust him in certain situations, which is natural. I remember being that guy. Mm -hmm. I came into this league as an offensive-minded defenseman, and they weren't going to trust me in defensive situations. And when they did, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Mm -hmm. They can't afford that. The Blues can't afford to have a sometimes it doesn't work. It, when in a league that every game is so important now. Mm. So Scott Perunovic has a lot to prove. We talked to Craig Berube on the fast line yesterday. He's like, look, it, he, he needs to be better defensively. That's Period. the bottom line. Mm-hmm. He, he can run a power play. He can pass the puck. He can join the attack. He can do everything that involves playing offense. Where he gets lost is playing on the defensive side. And when you're a small guy like that, you have to defend in a different way. You can't afford to rely on your strength. So if you've guess the wrong thing or miss the guy slightly and you're a six foot four, six foot five guy. You can make it up because you can make size. it up or you can block him out or whatever it is. One stride and a stick length, you back, you know, you got a chance to, to poke the puck away again. When you're Scott Perunovich, you got one shot at it. Mm-hmm. And so Scott Perunovich, what he has to do is stay above the puck. What that means is stay between the player and the net. He can't have himself in a situation to where he's defending side by side or behind a player. He ain't gonna win that battle. Okay. So let me ask you this. This is probably a stupid question, but no, never, how, how there does, are no stupid questions. Nah, I've got some. Uh, <laughs> how does uh, how, how how does Perunovic get better at that? Like, like what's the process? It's no, it's it, it's more reps uh-huh. um, and realizing that he's playing with the best players in the world. And I remember going through this transition when I was playing with the Islanders. I left St. Louis. I was playing regular shift, but I went to the Islanders and became a top four defenseman. I became a top two defenseman. I played alongside Zidane Ochara. We were the shutdown pair in the Eastern Conference at that time, that had teams like the Legion of Doom, Philadelphia Flyers, Eric Lindros, John LeClaire, Michael Renberg, yeah, Yarimer Yager, Mario Lemieux, all of these guys, massive individuals. Yeah, big boys. And I'm not a big guy. Like, I'm a big guy. I'm not that kind of big. I'm yeah. six foot one at the time, 215 pounds. Big-ish. Those guys are 6'4", 230, 6'5", 225 you got to learn how to defend, how to stay in front of them. Yeah. And so that's the one thing I learned quickly is you cannot be side-by-side side or behind a player that is that big and that good because now you're taking a penalty or you're getting scored on. So you have to stay in front of them. you got to make sure that you have good angles. Don't run right at a guy because you're not going to overpower him physically. You're just not. Now, when you get a chance to run him through the boards and you have that opportunity, yeah, make it hurt. Absolutely. But you've got to stay in front of them. Always kind of um, – Reattacking, reloading, as they call it, in front of the guy. What, what a, would you ever? Would you see an, a, a chance maybe for Callie Rosen to be up here and Perunovic to go back? Oh no, to, to I absolutely see that. Look, if I'm the St. Louis Blues right now, my top seven are um, Krug, Falk, Letty, Pareko, Mikola, Bortuzzo, Rosen. Perunovic is going down to the minors. Right? Okay, and it's not because I don't like him. Right? Oh, absolutely. I, I want him back up here fast. There's more work to do, though. He's got to take a regular shift. He's got to play against all the best players in the American League defensively. Last year when he went down, he ran the, he ran the show. He's leading the league in scoring at one point. But all that was offense and power play. I don't care about that right now. Right. If I'm Doug Armstrong, I don't care. I know you have that in the well. I need you to learn how to play defense. I need to be able to play you in a regular shift to where if you're playing against some of the top players, you're able to defend. If you're playing against third and fourth liners who are big, burly dudes... Think about Pat Maroon. Just think about the big rate. How's Scott Perunovich going to defend that? Oh, boy. It's difficult, yeah. right? So, yeah, sometimes you think like that. Wayne Simmons, like some of the big, dude, Milan Lucic, like 
do go through every team. They got some guys who are like, oh boy, <laughs> right? I just have this image in my head of Perunovic bouncing off of one of them. Well, yeah, but <laughs> so but that would be a big mistake. Don't play that way. Right. Don't play the physical game. Play the outsmart game. Stay in front. Stick on puck. Good angles. Take away time and space. Not try to run a guy through the boards because yeah. that won't work. Ooh. So that's the way I kind of view it coming into training camp. Now they just started. They have preseason games coming up. Scott Perunovic may he may have done his homework this week, this uh, past off season, and if he did, we'll see it in preseason, and he'll be matched up against some of the best players that they can possibly do it because they're going to want to see it, right? And if so, then he'll edge out Callie Rosen. Callie Rosen will go down to the minors because he's Mister Dependable. He'll go down there. He'll do the same thing he does up here, and Scott Perunovic will, Perunovic will get opportunities alongside Nico Mikola for that spot in the third pair. Boy, oh boy. I'm so stoked hockey's back. Like, I just love it so much. So, so going forward, so like if, you, if you're an established player, mm-hmm. how are you viewing training camp at this particular point? What, how are you making sure you're working your ass off, but then at the same time, you know, it's a long friggin' season, man. Yeah. You're, hopefully you're going to be playing until June. How do you yeah. balance that out? What's funny is there's only a few seasons in my career where I was ever where I ever felt established. I got gotcha. you. Um, for the most part, because I was a third pair defenseman. You were always how fighting. Hell, how the hell are you established? Mm-hmm. There's a new crop of young guys or free agents or guys they're they're coming in and take your job. So I never felt at ease for the well, I shouldn't say very seldom did I ever feel at ease. There's a couple of times where I had multi year contracts and I knew I was there, but you still have to prove that you're worthy of being there. So yeah. For me, it was always getting out there and proving I'm so much better than everybody else that's there for that job, for that particular spot. Mm-hmm. Um, now, as an established guy, when you're like a Brian O'Reilly, um, Colton Pareko, Tori Krug, man, you're just trying to stay out of the way. I mean, you really are, because it's an unpredictable, dangerous thing to be playing in preseason. You've got guys that are out there trying to – make their mark, and and some guys who don't know what the hell they're doing, and they're flying all around, they're unpredictable. Last thing you need is to get clipped by somebody like that. or So you're trying your best to get your reps in. In practice is probably more important, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where you're going to get your the rust and you know, knock the rust off. In the preseason games, yeah, you're trying to do your thing, uh, but you're trying not to get hurt either because it, it's not worth it. Yeah. Know? So, and as the preseason goes, uh, the veteran players, the established players, ramp it up. Right. You know, for the last two preseason games, usually, you've got a pretty established squad on the ice for both sides, whoever you're playing against. Makes it a little easier to bring your real game, your A game at that point, because all the unpredictability as far as the young players or the dumb players, um, most of that's gone by then. Very good. Have you heard? I mean, have, there's, has there been anything else in your wheelhouse here the last week or so when it comes to the Blues? Well, Craig Bruby was on the fast lane Chief. yesterday. The Chief. God, I love talking to him on there. He's awesome, man. He really is. And I just love that dude, period, in general. I he's just, great. Just, just, again, I've said it on the podcast before, but just the mindset that he brings to this team is just so exactly what we needed, and I love it. I yeah. just love it so I much. Mean, he really, he's the identity. Uh, he is. Yeah. yeah. And when you look at this team, you think of – sometimes you look at teams, you think of players. You look at this team, I think of the coach. And I go from there. Yeah. So – but he's great. He always gives us little nuggets. And so I just flat out asked him. I said, hey, look, David Perron's gone. He was a huge part of your roster. I'm not going to dwell on that because what's done is done. However, who takes that spot? You know, who plays alongside Ryan O'Reilly? Who's the, who's the shake and bake guy now with Ryan O'Reilly? And he just flat out said, Jordan Cairo. He says, for me – it has to be Jordan Cairo. He's got to take that next step. He's got to be that guy that plays alongside Ryan O'Reilly. He's got to be that guy that that drives the power play. So a lot of expectations put on Jordan Cairo. We'll see how that works. Well, hey man, I mean, and, and you've, you're getting the, the the you got the big money deal. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to 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 prove that you deserve that it's big the money show me deal. State, right, Donnie? You got, you got it, man. You got it. Okay, I got to ask you this real quick before we go. Yeah, I'm I'm. Virtually certain that you have not heard this yet. Okay. Because from what I understand, this clip just came out this morning. Uh-oh. Did you see the clip of Daryl Sutter? Yes. Uh, when, Matthew Kachuk? Uh, about Matthew Kachuk. And, 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 Daryl's a donkey. It, it was just very... Daryl's a donkey. One guy has won Stanley Cup's been a big part of playoff runs. Uh, so talking about Tiffoli. Toffoli. Toffoli. Yeah. And trying to, to just... 
So Why would it, you do that? Here's where Daryl falls short on on things. One, public speaking, he falls way short. <laughs> way <that>. short. <laughs> uh, but two is Daryl. I don't think is trying to be an a hole in that moment. I think what he's trying to do is um, praise the guy that's on his roster. Correct. But what he failed to do is acknowledge how great the player was that he lost. Yeah. And so, and but I think Daryl wanted to avoid that. I don't think he wanted to give Kachuk any praise. Correct. Because of the way everything went down and be, because of the way everything went down according to Daryl. Okay. Right. Not, it, it's old school mentality. We're talking the get off my lawn guy in a new world of the way things work. It's never a great mix. So Daryl did a great job with that team last year, obviously. Class would tell me that you say something nice about a player who did so much for your franchise in the last couple of years. And class would tell me that you follow that up by saying Tyler Toffoli is a good player. He's not the same player as Matthew Kachuk, but he has won Stanley Cups. And he has had deep playoff runs, and that knowledge and that experience is going to be very valuable to this hockey club. Right. But he doesn't have the ability to polish it up like that, Donnie. So when other players from around the league see Sutter say things like that... Nobody's surprised. Nobody's surprised, nope. and it doesn't change anybody's mind as to whether they would want to play in Calgary for him or not or whatever. Well, no, it, may, it matters. It, oh, it matters. Absolutely. There's players that were offered contracts this offseason that said, no, I'd rather not. There's players that had no trade agreements that when they were trying to orchestrate the Kachuk deal said, nope, I will not go there. So so when he does stuff like that, even yes. though it's really just him maybe probably tr- not trying to be a jerk, it is very oh, much detrimental to Calgary. He's got some snark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's definitely detrimental then to the franchise. Yep, and, and the way Daryl views it is, if they don't want to be here, I don't want them anyway. Okay. I'm not changing. That's Daryl Sutter. Hmm. So, hey, I guess we'll see how that goes. He's a Stanley Cup winning coach. He had a great season last year. He does things a little differently. I don't, as you know, my philosophy with coaching and just life in general is much different than Daryl is. You Um, smile more. I do smile more. (laughs) I have a pretty good time in life. (laughs) Um, But, hey, it is what it is. Absolutely so. Uh, For uh, our good buddy, Jeff Burton. Jamie Rivers, Donnie Fandango. It's the Last Minute Blues Podcast. As always, let's go Blues. The Last Minute Blues Podcast. Hear more at 1057thepoint.com. Powered by Together Credit Union. Empowering you to achieve your financial goals.